Hello walkers and welcome back to Montana. My name is Henry. I will be your proxy walker today, your virtual travel guide, your co-explorer. These are all the key words I like to use. Um, today it is about 11, a little after 11 a.m. Uh, early June and 67 degrees Fahrenheit, 19 degrees Celsius, windy, windy, probably 25, 20, 25 miles an hour. Um, and we are walking on the Livingston Peak Road, Forest Service Road 2532, I think. And this leads up to that snow-capped mountain up there. Now, surprise, we're not gonna hike all the way up there. We are gonna do about a mile, mile and a half and see this lovely uh, green open areas and we'll get up higher and get some better views of the surrounding mountains. I'll be quiet here, just gonna talk a little bit. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, very much appreciated. Check the link in the description below if you'd like to join that crowd. Um, very much uh, an encouragement and a vote of confidence, so thank you. Uh, what else? Early June, we've been getting a lot of rain, which is good. Um, and it's leading to this green up, what we call that, when it Everything turns green and then in July when the rain shuts off, everything goes brown again. This peak lives, uh, leads up to Livingston Peak Trailhead. From there, you can also drop down into Seuss Creek where we've done several walks. Hopefully the wind isn't too bad noise-wise and you can uh, pick up some of the meadow larks singing. See a lot of dandelions out here, but there's also some other yellow flowers which, let me see if I can find some that are not dandelions. <laughs> yeah, we'll go here. So this road actually leads through private land. So we have to respect that a little bit. So you can see these little yellow flowers, very pretty. You can also maybe see over there some windmills on the other side of the windmills, a little town. That's Livingston. It's the uh, east side of Livingston, and you can almost see the fish on the hill over there. <clears throat> Those uh, peaks over there are th kind of the wine glass, and we're just going to do a little walking. See some other white flowers over here you might be interested in. Look at these little guys.
That's somebody on a bike behind us. Hi there. Done. Good, how are you doing? Good. Hello, going again. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And uphill. Very fast down. Beautiful. Hey, have a good one. Hey, Jeff, you're going to be careful Sort of give you different viewpoints from time to time. Back, uh, those cars down at the base. That's where we started. And those snowy cloud shrouded mountains are the crazy mountains. And just to the right of them, sort of a ridge line there, is Sheep Mountain. And those are both on the other side of the Yellowstone River. I love the way the wind makes these taller glasses, grasses blow. Especially as you, as they get taller and you get these open spaces, they undulate like waves on, a, on the water. Same mechanism, of course.
it's a day like today that makes me really look forward to summer. Just a little taste. Just kind of wonder what kind of critters might be living up in areas like that. I imagine deer, and of course, and maybe black bears. Maybe mountain lions. They had a mountain lion, somebody pointed out, they had read on the news that, uh, there was a mountain lion last week in Livingston <clears throat> over on the Bozeman Connector Trail that I've filmed a couple times. Not the mountain lion, of course, but the trail. At least once. Love getting those kind of comments, any kind of comments, really. I really do appreciate them. I was going to hike Pine Creek Trail today, but as you can see, there's a lot more clouds to the south where I would have been. More coming in from the west that would have maybe gotten there by the time I got there. And also I'd have to drive through road construction. So I thought, hey, sure does look pretty out here. Let's just go out here. Maybe next week. Or maybe I'll go down to Yellowstone next week. Film a couple walks down there. Let me know your preferences in the comments section. Love to hear your thoughts, memories, ideas, occasional criticism. So over here, obviously as I said earlier, this road goes through private, private land. You've got a couple no trespassing signs over there. But something they do, I think pretty much all over the U.S., but specifically out west, they have orange blazes on fence posts. That's the same as a no trespassing sign. love seeing these ridges emerge as we climb up and get a different view. It's amazing to me how how different the view can change with just whoop, a couple hundred feet of elevation. <laughs> I didn't hear those folks behind us. The wind's so loud in my ears.
take another look back. You can see the road stretching down and away. A little bit better view of the town and the river. Got some other folks walking along with a couple dogs heading our way. Dogs look happy. I believe this ridge, this road goes over this ridge and then drops down into a valley. Those folks are very politely keeping their dogs at heel, but I have to say, I like getting greeted by a friendly dog, especially out here where they can feel free and open and non-defensive. I don't know if you can hear over the wind noise those crickets. Might be grasshoppers. see several places where they have piles of rock on this property. I'm not really sure why. Let me check my Onyx Hunts maps. Still on private property over there. So it's not state land or federal. You can see Interstate I 90. It's redundant, but um, just to the right of that pile of rocks, headed up into Bozeman Pass. And then all the roads and houses carving up the wine glass area.
There's Livingston Peak again. Making good progress on this road. See the grass waving in the breeze here. Love it. Still a fair amount of snow on that north side. Wouldn't surprise me if you can't get all the way up to the trailhead right now. check a number on my screen. My eyesight's so bad now. Some tiny little numbers. Look like I only had a minute and a half left on this card, but I've got 81. Oh. I was going to show you a grasshopper, but that might take a little bit.
see a two track leading off to the left here. I don't know what you guys call that in your place where you live, but this is what we call it here. Little water left over from the rain yesterday, last night. Dries up quick with this wind. Sorry, it dries up quickly with this wind. <laughs> That's one of my pet peeves is when people don't use adverbs properly. Just caught myself. We saw that person riding the bike earlier, who was actually a former neighbor of ours from Slovakia. And uh, this, if you follow this road up, there's a big loop you can do. You go up to the Livingston Peak Trailhead, as I mentioned, and then you can drop down into Seuss Creek, staying out of the um, wilderness area boundary because bicycles are not allowed in the wilderness area and then ride the road, East River Road, back into town, up to 89, then into town. It's 20 something miles. But as you can see, there's a lot of climbing to be done. I believe the road goes to the right and then somewhere makes its way up that hill. Oh, maybe in the little, there's a little valley between us and the hill. And then it makes its way all the way up and over there, somewhere up there is the trailhead. Might be more fun on e-bike. Love this little valley. It's all private land, but I'd love to go up there and explore. It's beautiful day. What a great day, you guys. Just lovely. You can see, again, um, Livingston over there on the other side of the highway, other side of the river. Really kind of a neat town. I love that town. Wonderful people.
All right, so we are uh, right at about a mile and a half here. And we're gonna keep going. What we're gonna do is turn around and go back the other direction. I just wanna show you this little cattle guard. And again, still through private property up here. Um, and you can see kind of on the left, the road snakes over and up a little side valley over there. We'll just go up here to the cattle guard. I don't know, maybe those of you from other areas that are not, haven't been out in the rural areas, I can't imagine that's too many of you, but this is an old cattle guard that's been filled in or has filled in, but the cattle, when those are empty, those bars, they can't walk across those bars. And so it effectively is a gate to them. And then, sorry, off to the left, there'll be an, another gate where you can put the cattle through if you need to. All right, let's head back, mile and a half. My battery may die, in which case uh, we'll end the video. But we've got probably another 20 minutes of that if you want to stick with us. And look at these views. Loving it. And the wind's at our back now, so hopefully there won't be, we'll be less likely to have wind noise.
You see that guy? About two inches long. It's a big one. See, we've got some some clouds moving in. We've had a couple of thunderstorms the last few days. Looks ominous, but we got a couple hours, I think, at least. Love those metal arcs. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear the wind blowing through the trees up here on the right. I love that sound.
Oh, sorry about that sky. I was looking at my phone trying to get a distance. You see the wind blowing those trees around. There's a hawk. Sheep Mountain coming into view. You can see a couple little wind turbines down there. <clears throat> it's my understanding those were experimental from the 70s, maybe? 80s? Maybe the 90s. Um, but they're fairly old, fairly small. They had an offer of a grant to put a wind farm up here somewhere. And the county opted out of that. Um, the idea being that it would be too expensive to maintain. I think also back then, fossil fuel prices were considerably less than wind and solar. And of course that's uh, flipped a bit now. Wind and solar, uh, new installations are cheaper on average. There are other challenges around that of course, but We've come a long way, in my opinion, the right way. I love looking out over this landscape and seeing how big it is. You get such amazing views that you just don't get back, get back east where, um, in parts of the mountains where the trees, there's so many hardwood trees that uh, you just can't really see anything. You never really get a view. And that's not a criticism. I love those big, vast forests back east, but it certainly is different. Oh, you hear that? That is either a Kulu or a Godwit. You see him? Curlew. Love it. Hopefully you can hear that. They are about the size of a chicken, much more slender, and a, um, a bill that sort of curves down. And they are a shorebird. There's a it's mate, so they're out here looking, either setting up a nest, or they already have a nest. Kind of a russet colored bird. But they come up here to nest and then in the winter they go down to the seashore somewhere and eat eat uh, I don't know sea critters little sea critters. That's a little treat to see them. I'm hoping that you can see the uh, the undulation and the contours of the of the land here. It's right around noon, so it doesn't have as much <laughs> doesn't have as much shadow to give it as, as much depth. But you can kind of see the lines, maybe. fun to imagine pre <coughs> um, 
pretty. Oh, look at this skilled guy. Little, little caterpillar. Um, imagine before we came out here and hunted everything out, what this would have looked like with 10,000 bison and herds of elk, grizzly bears and wolves and all kinds of wildlife. Oh, those curlew are fussy. Um, and that, I, I'm not making a political statement there, I'm just saying that that must have been amazing. The amount of animals and birds and things that we're able to make use of this landscape. Just incredible. I believe this area, the crow people referred to it. I don't know the Absalaga name for it, but it was where the elk cross because there was a place where a lot of wildlife, particularly elk, would cross the Yellowstone. I think I have that information right. And if I'm mispronouncing Absalaga, please let me know as well. It could be Absalaga or Absalaga. I don't know. Like much of the internet, I don't always let not knowing stop me from saying something. Somebody headed up the road. <laughs> Somebody and their dog. Another person making the turn way down there. I'm wearing uh, <laughs> I'm wearing uh, polarized sunglasses, so the colors to me look fantastic. I'll have to toy with the color in post production, but uh, I had. I bought a little polarized filter for this camera and the camera is wonderfully small and compact but that also means the filter is small and compact and I used it two or three times before I lost it. It'll probably turn up in some uh, some pocket somewhere someday. <clears throat> anyway they're 30 or 40 dollars and I don't want to buy a new one just to lose it again. But on a today like today, it sure would make a difference. If you're curious, it's the DJI Osmo Pocket 2 with the do-it-all handle accessory using their little wonderfully little wireless mic. Uh, it's a great little camera. The image could be a little softer, but that's okay. Or at least maybe an option to turn down the sharpening would be nice. But other than that, it is a fantastic camera. In my opinion, of course. Oh, I, I had mentioned to someone that I was going to do a little video. Um about the gear that I've used over the years. I should do that soon.
Look how ominous these clouds look now behind us. Not too bad, but getting there. Um, you can see the car down there where the road meets. I'm going to wrap this up here, but not yet. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Um, I do appreciate it. Uh, let me know in the comments section or on social media um, if this is the kind of walk you like. I, I want to hear your preferences. I did a survey monkey poll a little while ago, and then they never told me until I wanted to get the results that... You only get 10 results without paying like $100 or something. So uh, I got some great information from that, but not as much as I would have liked. Thank you guys who filled that out. Um, I may still go back and see if I can get a cheaper version or something or a free trial or something. Anyway, um, let me know. This could be really boring for some people. Could be really interesting. Oh, here comes our bike friend from behind. We'll let them pass before we wrap this up totally. Ooh, he's going fast. All right, guys, we did about, I would say three, three and a quarter miles, 372 feet of elevation gain. Beautiful, beautiful walk. Hit me up in the comments section. Come back again soon. Not sure where it's going to be, but I've got a couple ideas. Um, so until then, keep on stepping. 